games but also for the for the uh, developers and for the publishers this is a very exciting and new space that um is i feel it's very important to at least understand the space if you're not in it because it can teach you so much about uh, game development and the gaming industry as a whole uh, i do believe that uh, like i said even though our strengths are in certain types of games um it's important to diversify as well explore different genres especially in hyper casual because the trends are changing all the time uh, what's successful today will not be successful tomorrow and it's important to keep evolving as a studio so as a studio i would say you know it's it's varied we try to do uh we try to do a lot of different genres but at the end of the day we know where our strengths lie as well and uh, when push comes to shove uh, you know it's uh, simulation role playing uh, high production quality games these are things that we excel at great great like and like uh, we have this uh, game jam going on like and like uh, what do you think of uh, game jams in general like and what you will be looking in game jams in your point of view yeah so you know from from a from a small studio perspective and also now being up on the publisher side of things after the acquisition um i look at the game jam as and i have always looked at the game jam as a a sacred tradition in the gaming industry or uh, in game development especially it's one of those things that which really brings people together and not just brings you together in a social kind of fun way but also in a productive way which forces people to work in teams towards goals and within a short time frame and i think across my career what i've found mario is that um you know that time pressure really brings out genius sometimes I'm not not talking about myself but I'm talking about a lot of other people i work with uh, you know having that time pressure those deadlines um i think it can force you to come up with some really good ideas and it puts the brain in a situation where you know uh, under pressure it just squeezes out some really really uh, cool things and i think ideas in general uh, are not just you know i don't mean ideas in terms of just game ideas or game concepts or pitch documents or design documents but i mean even in the phase of production in the phase of programming in the phase of creating art uh sometimes you can have some really cool breakthroughs uh when you're under that kind of time pressure uh i mean having said that i think in yeah. general uh the game jam environment is beautiful it's awesome uh fighting for something fighting to win fighting for pride uh, these these things really again are things that bring out the best in people and uh, i i i think it i think it's great um i would like to say one more thing about game jams that um in our space in hyper casual at least uh, every day is almost like a game jam because uh, it's almost like you know, you're working on new concepts new ideas very very regularly very very frequently uh, you don't spend months and months making the same game or, or at least it's rare so when you have a successful game it will spend months and months but most of the time you're trying out new ideas new concepts and so it never gets boring and it's kind of like uh, our whole lives are like a, a game jam and uh, so to ha- to be part of this game jam is to, the global game jam is amazing it's happening everywhere in the world and to be part of it is really uh, it's really really cool and uh, i want to see what we come up with you know i want to see what everyone comes up with how, how you think under pressure and uh, what what you can possibly execute within um you know the short time frame that you're given yes like i hope like a uh... Uh, like i was about to ask you about the last point like why you have covered it like since hyper casual is all about making games as fast as possible doing prototypes as quick as possible uh, so yeah uh, if i think like you can find uh, some interesting ideas and like talents over here in this, at the end of this game jam uh, so uh, i think like uh, most people know hyper casual games uh, uh, but i would like to know like you know can you explain a bit more about hyper casual games and its market and how it is worked definitely definitely so hyper casual is a recent phenomenon it's fairly new like i said around 2018 2017 2018 is when it started becoming very popular the best way i could describe hyper casual is probably uh, with a with an analogy about a different industry so let me give you an example uh, for example it takes 10 million dollars to build a hollywood movie to create a hollywood movie a successful superstar uh, movie with johnny depp and you know one big actress probably let's assume the cost is 10 million dollars but let's say to make this movie this successful huge hit movie uh, you didn't need to spend 10 million dollars or at least not at first what if you could just make the trailer for the movie and spend only 10000 dollars on that trailer right so a fraction of the cost of the movie 
and then you can test this trailer out in the market and based on the test of that trailer you can tell if this is going to be a successful movie or not and whether it will make 20 million dollars in revenue or not this system does not exist for the for the film industry but it exists for the games industry and what it has done is that it has given birth to the hyper casual games industry the hyper casual games industry the the formula or the system we follow is that we do not make the entire game up front we only invest enough resources time money into making a simple gameplay trailer for the game that we want to make uh this gameplay trailer uh can be 15 seconds or 30 seconds long you can test multiple trailers at the same time and we run a test on uh any of the popular ad ad uh, ad platforms now we get data back that tells us whether this trailer is testing well and whether it will be a successful game or not now most of the time if we get a really good test result back from this trailer it's like a 90% like guarantee that the game is going to become a number one hit game and so without even making one level for the game sometimes we make only half a level for the trailer sometimes we make just two levels for the trailer and these are very small simple levels and we make the trailer within two weeks so without spending any time without spending any money without spending um anything basically we've got an answer about whether this game is going to be successful or not and now what that does is it allows us to also test multiple trailers in a month for different game concepts so we can do two three four trailers sometimes in a month and keep testing our ideas so that over the course of 6 months we've tested so many ideas that most likely one of them is going to be a hit and pass the the, the test and give us a globally successful game now that's the process we use to create and publish hyper casual games this obviously i'm only giving you a brief introduction there's a lot more that goes into it but this would be the brief idea of how the hyper casual industry works now that that's part of the process of how we actually build and publish the games but let's talk a little bit about what the types of games are uh, because these are very simple games usually just in portrait mode on mobile um and they should be uh, games that appeal to anyone from the age of 7 years old to 70 years old now what this means is most of the time the controls have to be super simple one finger controls preferably at the bottom of the screen so that the user doesn't have to hold the phone with two hands or they don't have to move their finger around the screen um these are these are key critical features of hyper casual games another thing is that hyper casual games have have a very vibrant colorful uh, kind of art style and a very toony look so that they do up so that they kind of appeal to non gamers and the most important thing about hyper casual is that we are not targeting gamers at all we are targeting the mass market the mass market is people who may never have picked up a game and played it before the people who would look at me playing dota and go like hey what the hell is are those creatures on screen uh the, we're not uh, we're not targeting the gamers we're targeting the mass market the people who would never pick, pick up and play a game we're trying to make them gamers we're trying to make games more accessible for them easier for them to play and understand easier for us to market those games to them and therefore hyper casual is able to attract about 1 billion new gamers uh in the last 4 5 years so that is that is what hyper casual is so very now it's become a very deep and very uh, studied uh, vertical in the games industry and i suggest that you know with a few google searches and youtube links you could probably educate yourself about hyper casual in very in very detailed um over a couple of hours uh, so i think it's a very interesting space to understand and be in uh, it's a very data driven space it's a very competitive and aggressive space but it's also a very fun space and there's lots of opportunity for success okay that's nice so uh, like uh, what do you think of the future of the hyper casual like where it is headed like and where do you think think like it would go like you have anything you have any solution on the future of hyper casual yeah i'm like the biggest evangelist of hyper casual so uh, both the process the type of games we're getting the industry as a whole i'm the biggest evangelist you'll find because to me what i really believe is that what hyper casual has done right it's similar to what um apple did with the uh, with the imac back in the day or what they did uh, with the iphone and what android did with the smartphone um it's basically made this technology of games more accessible to loads more people it's also provided a platform for developers and small companies to come and have success and actually build successful products in this space again very similar to what apple did uh with the iphone infrastructure um and i think hypercasual is doing the same thing for games it is taking this 
technology of games the experience of games and taking it to the mass market and i think that is invaluable because one thing that games have not been able to do before this is to appeal to the mass market and now hyper casual is allowing us to do that to bring in people like my mother and grandmother who would never have probably played a game before and they are picking up and playing these games and that's beautiful and i think that more and more of the gaming industry is going to start adopting the principles of hyper casual because ultimately uh if these games these experiences we are building cannot be accessible by loads and loads of people then you know i feel like we're not doing good enough on some level in the same way i feel like uh technology was may not have been good enough back in the day uh i feel like back in the day also games were not good enough uh, and they, and now we're just getting to that point we're scratching the surface of how do we take games to the 7 billion people on this planet and i think hyper casual is giving us the answers it just does not it doesn't have all the answers but it is giving us some of the answers for sure and i think it will be a big step uh it will be a big stepping stone to actually getting the whole world to be playing games right great like uh, so like uh, uh we have uh, some jammers like who's ready to think a uh, hyper casual concept but like uh, you know like uh, you said like uh, this hyper casual audience is non gamers so there are like gamers who participating in this game jam events and like everything like how do a designer you know think to make a hyper casual game when they are designing it for a non gamer great question great question and uh, again i'm one of the people who started off as a pure hardcore pc gamer with dota uh, right so i've had to learn the hard way on how to break away from the games that i love to play and start moving towards making the games that people love to play and you know there's a difference between when you're looking for games and looking for ideas and looking to build maybe a studio or maybe like you know what is your next great concept i think it's important to to while also looking at internally and thinking hey you know what do i want to make what do i want to play that's a great way to look at things you know uh, especially if you're in traditional gaming industry and you're building for gamers that's a great way to look but i think in hyper casual and even maybe in casual games a lot of it depends on what the market wants you know and not about what we want to make what we want to make is great all well and good we'll probably make a really fun game that i and i i'll probably make a really fun game that me and some of my friends would probably play but then when i show that game to my mother my grandmother my father my 7 year old niece or nephew most likely they aren't going to be able to play and understand it and that's when kind of like the break in uh, you know the divide uh, comes into play which is am i making something for myself or am i making something for a wider audience and hyper casual is always about a wider audience so the first thing i would say is you know if you're looking into this direction of hyper casual and wanting to make a hyper casual game then you need to first start with what is what does the market want what do the what do the people want and our market in hyper casual is the masses so you know what are the most trendy things in the world right now and i can give you an example for example a few months ago there was a tv show called squid game it came really popular worldwide and within months there were lots of type hyper casual type of games around the whole concept of the squid games uh, idea and that's just one example but there have been many many other examples as well uh, some of our games the soap cutting and rubber band cutting for example are based on popular trends online of people actually doing these activities um these are the types of these are the types of trends we catch on to the type of things happening in the world that we look at and say hey this is popular and people would want to play a game on this and uh, it doesn't have to be a youtube trend or a tiktok trend uh, it can just be a real life activity that people love to do like uh, exercise or you know um, painting things like that these are this is what the pulse of the world is currently looking at and a lot of times in hyper casual be actually all the time in hyper casual what really matters is you know what does the market want and uh, learning early on to look outside yourself and to look more at what the market wants i think that is a key element in uh, trying to conceptualize new hyper casual games oh, sorry like i don't yeah you can go ahead oh uh, no i i i was i was done mario that was i was right, that was fine, just fine, what i was saying yeah all right cool uh so like um, so now uh now fries code is acquired by crazy labs and you are head of studio of crazy labs in india so uh, what is crazy labs uh, and other hyper casual publishers 
expecting from our indian talents like as you know like you are working for like you are a part of crazy labs now so what they are expecting from our indian talents right so i think in general having a portfolio of games especially 3d games uh is important for a hyper casual studio especially for young studio if you're looking to get in uh it's good to have a few games so even if they're in video form and not in apk form sometimes uh, that is also like uh, it's it's something that we would look at and uh, be able to judge whether your studio or you as an individual are capable of having success in the hyper casual field um so portfolio is critical um uh, the other thing is that i think if you want to get in actively into the hyper casual industry it's it's not too hard these days you can simply search for somebody who is a publishing manager at any of the top hyper casual uh, publishing houses that are out there crazy labs or um voodoo lion studios these are publishers that are out there um and you can talk to any of their publishing managers on linkedin and they would probably help you uh, get on board in hyper casual and um i think there are two things most importantly whenever it comes to a hyper casual game that i look at or uh, fifth and in terms of the amount of uh, importance i give each one also is around 50 50 one is idea and one is uh, execution uh, the idea is as important as the execution a lot of times so uh, you know finding the right idea at the right time for the market uh, these are this is a super important thing and like i was saying for the previous question as well a lot of times it's not about what you want to do but it's more about what does the market want what kind of game does the market want today or tomorrow you know and how can i give them that game in the best form possible and uh, answering being able to answer those two things uh, will give you a great combination of idea and execution um can you can you come up with the right idea at the right time and then can you build the best possible experience of that idea and uh, I, i think mario you know rubber band cutting is probably one of the great examples and i would say maybe even soap cutting um is that uh, taking a game taking a taking a, a concept that's out there or something that people are doing and gamifying it for a hyper casual audience and for a hyper casual game is uh, you know that's a great example of how it's done because um we've taken a lot of things a lot of feelings a lot of a lot of the real life experience and brought it into the game itself you know in a very satisfying kind of way and i think in terms of when we look at it from the market's perspective uh even before soap cutting there was a game called i peel good about peeling uh peeling fruits and vegetables which was our inspiration for soap cutting and these three games across across the board you can see that you know um, bringing that level of satisfaction uh giving the people kind of what they wanted because they were watching videos on these things and also executing it in the most satisfying way possible you know these are things that really made these games successful and uh yeah that 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 would be my answer to your question okay. so like uh, here here the jammers are like making games like what tips and tips or advice like that you would give to the jammers here who are looking to start their path on hyper casual uh, because like most of the jammers here are like our students and like some of them are professionals so either like they can you know work start to their career start their career in a hyper casual studio or start their own hyper casual uh, you know start their own hyper casual games uh, so you know like what you would give advice to these people um so try your best in the game jam i think that's the most important thing i think the game jam environment is here for a reason and you must uh, make use of that of this moment because game jams are truly when a lot of people shine and take the first steps in their careers um so I, that would be that would be my number one advice is that or uh, even though this is a fun uh, fun activity it's uh, it's kind of also hyper competitive in a way because uh, you know everyone is try- trying to um, show their skills and um, you know i think taking it taking it from that kind of perspective of you know what am i doing now and how can i do it best and uh, putting your all into it is something that will is going to benefit you one way or the other um whatever comes out of the game jam or whatever kind of end result there is for you your team or your friends um i think uh, take that as uh, you know and, the, and all the feedback you get from your peers from the community from or uh, the judge the judges etc um take all that feedback and take it in a good way and try and work on the game um you know to, to take it forward in some way now that is specifically about the game jam itself what i want to give you advice on on 
or uh, getting into hyper casual is that hyper casual uh, hyper casual games require you to do games in a specific style at a specific speed um and at a specific quality level and i think these are three things you should keep in mind while getting into hyper casual and uh, practice if you look at the most popular hyper casual games you'll see that they are uh, they have a certain color palette or they look a certain way they play a certain way they are si- they are simplistic in their controls look at those things uh, and try and practice making games similar to those even if they are one level two levels it doesn't matter how many levels you can make the first step is just to see and try and make a game that looks and feels and plays like a hyper casual game and I, even if you for practice specifically if you want to start with trying to clone a game or try to make the exact game i think that's a a good start for internal practice i would never recommend doing this uh, you know professionally but uh, just to practice it would be good to see especially if you're st- your student you're young to try and uh, emulate what successful games have done on your own private uh, you know on your own private editor or unity editor or whatever game editor you use and see if you can uh, reach that kind of quality level because from the outside it looks easy to make a hyper casual game but when you actually go down to try and make it it's uh, it's not as easy as it looks so first thing would be uh, practice and like I, like i said in the first answer i gave try and build a portfolio um if you have a portfolio that gives you an edge and lets you have a have a start in the industry especially when you contact a publishing manager you show them your portfolio it makes it easy for them to kind of decide uh, you know how they want to continue working with you that's great i hope like uh, the jammers here like understood this we also striving uh, you know live streaming this uh, event like so that like those who missed this event like they will be uh, watching it later on so finally like what kind of games you like to play than hyper casual because i know like you will be playing lot more hyper casual games every day so other than that like what do you play um so like i said i played a lot of dota when i was younger and recently as well uh, I took some time to start playing Dota again so I spent about I played about 200 games of Dota <laughs> over the last 3 4 months um but apart from that I've uh, and I'm, embar- I'm extremely embarrassed by how those games went considering I was once a professional and then spent 2 uh, three months getting destroyed but um, beyond that I like to play um, I've started liking to play more casual games or but like there's a game called Don't Starve Together on team which i really really like it's, it, it's i think it was an indie game and now that studio is also acquired um that's a really nice game i enjoy the survival horror kind of uh, but cartoony kind of game um on the console i like to play more immersive games or uh, like i recently started red dead redemption 2 and um, i finished a lot of games like i played hitman or uh, hit the new hitman series all three of those games i really love love that game it's one of the best games uh, i've played and um, i think w- one thing i should say is that as i'm getting older i'm starting to realize that uh, the bigger the, the bigger a game is to finish the less i would want to play it and the more i want to watch someone else playing it so i started doing a lot of that i i end up watching a lot of games on youtube and streamers playing and uh, completing games so i can go through the story at least without having to put in the hard work of actually playing the game that's true <laughs> so right so like uh, we can have some questions from the audience like uh, audience like if you like to uh, ask any questions uh, suraj ji regarding hyper casuals like you can ask them ask him any, any question like you can if you see like you can request to speak to, so that like if you raise your hand like can we can give you access to speak so anyone Okay. you can ask me anything it doesn't have to be about hyper casual i'm happy to answer anything all right so like anything different so uh, we have two people yeah that, uh, cool. yeah uh rajesh like you can accept the invitation and like you can ask your question ha can you guys hear me yes yeah. ha hi so rajesh i actually have a doubt for you Yeah. Uh, unfortunately it's regarding hyper casual cool happy to answer anything <laughs> uh, like actually i had this doubt from the like as, as you said hyper casual was booming in the 2017 era i was pretty much observing those things during those time uh, like i had this doubt from pretty starting like yeah, as you said like i have also observed many companies making many prototypes uh, like before actually publishing hyper casual game 
But what is that point when you actually know that like among these all prototypes, this is the game that's going to be hit the market and how do you choose that one game among those prototypes? Right. So this is one of those things that we teach very deeply um, in our accelerators, the crazy hubs, which by the way, I just forgot to mention, uh, we have crazy hubs accelerators in Mumbai and Hyderabad, but, uh, where small studios can get funding, etc. We'll, uh, I'm sure we'll discuss that more at some point, but um, basically this is one of the things we teach uh, about uh, the process itself. Now, the process is divided into four testing phases. These four phases are called, uh, okay, let's, let's call them three phases for now. The first phase is the marketability test, okay, where we test only the trailers for the game. Yeah. Now, a lot of times, uh, you can get a test result back for a trailer, which tells you that, A, you should continue working on this game, but it may not necessarily be a huge success unless mm-hmm. something changes. But a lot of times, we also get such great results from these trailer tests that it tells you that mostly no matter what you do, you could have a successful game from this uh, from this trailer. So that is the first step at which I say you get a hint of whether this game is going to be successful or not in hypercasual. This is the marketability test. Hmm. Uh, am I am I answering your question? Just yeah, so, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So the first that's the first test, and that's where you get a hint. Hmm. Uh, second test is called a retention test, where you test if the people who are who have downloaded the game and clicked on the ad that you the trailer that you tested, uh, the ones who clicked on the trailer when it was shown to them, and then actually downloaded the game. In the retention test, we test how but long... In that case, you actually release the game, right? In that case, we actually release a version of the game without many levels. Okay. Uh, very few levels. So, I would say the first test for our game, Soap Cutting, had only five levels on loop. And uh, okay. that was the first build we put out. So, before okay. that, it was just trailers. After that, it was the first build had only five levels. Um, okay. There are actual games published with five levels. I never known that. There are games published with zero levels as well. <laughs> okay. <laughs> probably, you probably never clicked on those ads that were shown to you. Okay, okay. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah, that, that that's part of the industry. Mm-hmm. And um, it may go away at some point. This may not be how mm-hmm. we are going to test in the future because maybe Apple will stop allowing this. Google will stop allowing this. Mm-hmm. Um, so it might be only that, you know, in the last three, four years, we've been able to do this. And in the future, we might not be able to. But... That's, okay, that's, okay. that's the that's the edge of the sword that we live on. Mm-hmm. Basically, anything can happen tomorrow in hyper casual, um, mm-hmm. and we have to adapt and evolve. Mm-hmm. Now, to answer your question a bit better, mm-hmm. across the four stages of testing, you can become more and more confident at each stage that mm-hmm. the game is going to be successful. Your first thing come in the first stage, but if you have a good first stage of testing and a good second stage of testing, most likely the game is going to get published. And mm-hmm. there are numbers and benchmarks. That if I bore you with them right now, you'll go to sleep. But <laughs> as you learn more and more about hypercasual, you understand that uh, your first marketability test has to come, uh, has to beat the benchmark. If it doesn't beat the benchmark, it's going to fail the test. And uh, that benchmark is a number. It's around mm-hmm. 30 cents at this point. It's, and um, again, I don't want to go into too much detail, but um, your marketability test will give you the first hint. And sometimes it can be such a strong hint that... Uh, it can help you go all the way or it can tell you that your game is going to go all the way as well. Mm-hmm. So it's like, it's done with these tests, right? Can you say that again? It's uh, like the process is done through these steps, right? The process is done through these steps, exactly. So to get a game published and launched and to call it a successful game, you have to pass through all the stages of testing first and then the game is launched. Um, okay. And even after the game is launched, you have to do work on it. You have to keep making changes, iterations, uh, mm. add features, uh, make new ads, things mm. like that to keep the game alive and profitable. Um, but having said that, I believe the first, just that marketability test, the ability to do many trailers in one month um, mm. for a studio, I think that is a very critical change. Yeah, and allow it allows a lot one month for a game, right? It, so it's, it takes about one or two weeks to make a trailer. Okay. okay. Um, at, at most. Sometimes some games, it takes only two, three days to make a trailer. If your team is really fast or if you're really fast. So, you can even go at that speed. Uh, totally depends from game to game is different. Some trailers mm-hmm. take one month to make. Some trailers take one and a half, two months to make. Uh, depending on the complexity of the game that you're trying. So, I would say it varies uh, depending from game to game. Mm-hmm. 
like as you said the crazy labs accelerator i was also following those things for, for a pretty while and i yeah. am very much interested in this like it when it will be coming to our city like that like those thoughts are in knowledge yeah. in my mind <laughs> um so i can't give you a fixed date but i can tell you very soon uh, okay it will be coming okay that's a pretty much good information i can hint that it that uh, that very soon there will okay. be one university and um, we are planning on opening accelerators all around the country mm-hmm. um and of course uh, you know we will be there very soon that's yeah, that's actually uh, very really great thing you guys are doing because there are many we are not making any concrete promises as yet uh, mm-hmm. i can i can tell you that we will be there very soon sure. we actually will be waiting for that <laughs> of course of course definitely okay so like anything like, like i have one one doubt to many yeah 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 so like as part of the accelerator like what will be will be suggesting like how how will be how will we guys be prepared for those things so since we're talking about the accelerator let me give you a few more details as well mm-hmm. uh, and sure. everyone listening uh, the accelerator is a physical space uh, where you'll be asked to come join us if you are selected you or your team will be asked to join us for four months so uh, working every day to try and build a number one or uh, top chart hyper casual hit game during this time we'll train you mentor you we'll teach you with webinars session workshops uh, on everything hyper casual unity how to build a successful game how to understand the process uh, we'll train you and we'll also pay you for your time or uh, during that time during if if during the period of the accelerator you also publish a hit game uh, with crazy labs with the crazy hubs accelerator then you will also be entitled you or your team depending on whether you join us as an individual or as a team you or your team will receive a 25% profit share on the mm-hmm. game as well and that can amount to a whole lot of money um mm-hmm. in the space of hypercasual so um that's kind of a summary of the program itself and um you know when we do come to chennai uh mm-hmm. we will I, i would say in a few months so we would be starting within the next couple of months we would be starting a registration process and mm-hmm. um taking things forward as well so um keep your eyes open and your your on the ground for mm-hmm. any of the registration process starting Now, having said that, uh, I also forgot your questions. So, if you could remind me, uh, what your question is, I think I can. Uh, like, like, what is this thing about? Like, how we are basically getting prepared for this accelerator thing? Um, I'll repeat what I said earlier, man. I think practicing the hyper casual style is important. Hmm. I think if you can jump in, if you know Unity and you can jump into Unity, or your someone in your team hmm. or your friends knows Unity, jump into Unity, start making a scene in the hyper casual style, or uh, pick up a game like from Voodoo, like uh, High Heels or. roof rails one of the common runners i mm-hmm. would say that have come out roof rails or high heels for example to so real clone and get practiced right i would say not even clone but at least try and like even if you yeah. create something unique but it looks like those games the okay, 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 okay. like the unity the look and feel the kind of characters you use and a mm-hmm. lot of the assets for these things are available online for free yeah. nowadays so uh, if you can put together something in unity even if it's a set static scene that's mm-hmm. a good start um mm-hmm. must be it's a great place to be or uh, to have a studio but it's a good start and if you can do that and uh, you know like then actually like build some gameplay into it um again that's that's the next step but if i was advising you on more and this is more on like i'm not giving you the advice i'm giving you is not like hey in one month you'll have something done you know it's more like if i give you this advice and you start today then in a couple of days you should have made some progress you know mm-hmm. on, on trying to trying to do that especially if you're a developer doing things in unity mm-hmm. i feel like uh, that's kind of the that's how fast you can make progress in hyper casual because the things you're trying to do are they, they're not very complicated mm-hmm. uh, we're not trying to build massive worlds we're trying to do things more on a micro scale a lot of times you know and uh, it takes effort to make really cool good looking satisfying things but uh, at the same time Uh, it's not as hard as doing other formats of games and it doesn't take as long so um, yeah my that my suggestion would be just uh, start with some experimentation and practice if you're new to as you look at some reference games and try to mimic what they are doing and i think in that process of trying to do what they are doing you will learn so much about what it takes to build a hyper casual game that slowly slowly you'll be better and better prepared to do it so with each new game you take up each new practice session for a game I think that could really like every game you do basically every even if you're just making trailers every 30 second trailer you make is probably 10 steps forward um and those 10 mm-hmm. steps forward can be taken in a very short space of time so um yeah i would say just just once you start 
you'll really feel the need uh, to keep making progress because you'll be making so much progress yourself. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you so much for the answers. Sure, man. Thank okay, you. then I'll take uh, another speaker. Like, is it fine? All right, I think we have uh, Darshan and Dhruv as well who yeah. are raising their hand. I'll, I'll do it. Uh, Dhruv, like, you can accept the invitation to speak. Hey, Dhruv. Hello, uh, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, hi, Sandro Deshpande. Uh, I'm a game art and design student. Uh, so my question was that uh, with the current boom, uh, like, uh, oh yeah, there's a current boom of hyper casual games. Uh, which, uh, which way would you suggest to go to? You know, like uh, once, once I graduate, you know, like should I, you know, like start working on my own or should I join like a hyper casual, you know, studio or like uh, maybe like a double A uh, company or like a triple A game studio or something? Like which one would be better according to the you know market trend and everything? You know, I won't. I won't tell you which one is better or worse. What I'll tell you is the ground reality of which direction you can take. All right. A lot of times when you uh, go into a AAA studio as a developer, you'll be working on one feature for one year, uh, most likely. That happens a lot. Um, you know, I know somebody. One of my friends uh, was telling me a story about somebody he knows who worked on a door opening and closing mechanic for about eighteen months or so. Um, maybe a little less. I'm not sure. But um, in that time, he was working for a huge company for a great couple of years on his portfolio. Mm-hmm. But ultimately, the only thing he actually did was one or two mechanics. Um, in hyper casual, if you spend eighteen months, whether it's at a company or uh, working or whether as a job or whether it's starting your own studio, you're most likely not only going to do eighteen different games, uh, game mechanics, but you're probably going to do more than uh, probably over eighteen months. You would do. Uh, I would say 30, 40 different game ideas. And in those 30, 40 different game ideas, there could be up to 80 mechanics uh, probably that you that you end up doing, you know, just pure math. And um, right. that's the kind of learning, pure learning that you can have in hypercasual, which is that once you're done with 18 months of, uh, you know, of hypercasual versus 18 months of AAA, I, I really don't think there's a comparison in terms of learning, uh, you know, most of the right. time. So you guys way, uh, I'm sorry, are you saying something? No, please, please go on. I'll, I'll come back to it. Uh, like you mean that, uh, like in a, in a shorter period of time, you'll be, uh, you know, gaining more experience and you know, learning more things, right? Exactly. Compared exactly. to a triple A studio. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Um, okay. In a triple A studio, you learn different things. I won't say you don't learn anything, but in terms of game programming, at least, or even a lot of times, art and uh, you know, animation and other fields, um, you are only end up, you only end up working on one thing. What you do learn on the other on the other hand is that you learn how to work in a big company. You learn how to work with loads of people, being part of a process. You know, learn how to use uh, group communication tools, which are very important when you're actually like uh, working at a big company. Um, you know, to be able to coordinate with lots of people at the same time and work in big groups of people and actually do uh, and actually make progress. So yeah, you do learn things. I'm not saying you don't, but when it comes to actual like game related stuff, uh, gameplay related stuff. Whether you're a designer or an artist or programmer, I think my perspective is that a lot of times uh, I, there's no comparison on how much you can learn in hyper casual. Because um, again, even as a game designer, if I look at it from my perspective, if I joined a big company when I was younger, uh, an EA or something like that in their India office, I, I don't see how I would have worked on more than one or two games or, or one or two features in one or two games in a couple of years. You know, whereas I can see my last two years of hyper casual, we have tested about uh, maybe a hundred plus game ideas, had three huge successes in that time. And um, I know how much I've learned, you know, and I I really don't think that um, in any other kind of field of game development, I would have learned this much, you know, because uh, you just end up doing so much. Right. Makes sense. Uh, one question I have is that, uh, like, so right now I'm studying uh, game art and design, and I have, like, uh, I think very, very little to no experience in programming. So, right. if, if, with this skill, sh- uh, with this, uh, uh, like, my skill, uh, like, uh, skills, will I be able to enter the hyper casual market? Like, or will they be, like, you know, like, you have to learn programming also and then uh, come to this market, uh, like, this, uh, you know, trend? I think to make a hyper casual game, you need a combination of many skills. Okay? That's the way to look at it. Now, 
does it have to be all those skills are in you not necessary i think you can mm-hmm. create, you can find a team a group of friends partners or even hire people you know if that's possibility um or get interns who are younger than you um to work with you and to fill up the skills that you don't have i think as a artist and designer you're definitely very valuable in hyper casual because um you know in any or in any any kind of gaming field but in hyper casual um, the idea the concept the research that goes behind why i want to do this idea at this time those are the things that are very important i would like i was saying 50% is idea 50% is execution um and a designer a designer producer kind of role would would be involved in both sides of course but a uh, heavy part of that responsibility is is on you for the idea for the concept for which game when why what is the market want um you know so so i think um yes your skills research are necessary can you say that again uh, the research is necessary that's what i think right yes absolutely absolutely okay uh, the research is necessary and uh, just understanding what the market wants right it's a skill that comes with playing lots of games researching the market uh, applying your design thinking a lot of times um you know and not just executing things that you want to execute so i would say putting equal efforts in both areas and um, you know using using the skills available to you yes but also using the skills available uh, to the people around you and finding building partnerships and friendships that can uh, that can actually lead to some cool professional stuff and not just about having fun together i mean actually making progress and uh, building some cool games cool ideas etc i think um, the focus should go more there um rather than trying to do everything yourself or trying to learn everything yourself for sure um it's always good to have all the skills in one person that makes that person a very kind of uh, all in one army you could say yeah. <laughs> but it doesn't have to be that way all the time and i know like uh, there are cases of individuals uh, solo developers who've had huge success in hyper casual but at the same time there are lots of stories of uh, small studios two three people who've also had those huge successes and been able to find uh, you know uh, a foothold in the industry okay uh, thank you so much there is a one uh, like small last question so yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, i understand uh, the accelerator thing you were talking about before like uh, because i live in pune so you know like uh, as your student students in mumbai right. so yeah, like yeah. Uh, like i didn't quite understand that actually so it's a the physical space and accelerator is a place where uh, usually studios or companies come to get funding and training on how to run a startup this accelerator the crazy hub oh, okay. accelerator in mumbai is mm-hmm. again it's for uh individuals or teams who are looking to uh, start companies or studios in hyper casual games who want training and funding uh to be able to do that we uh we pay a certain amount to any person who joins the program for four months and also we provide funding opportunities to the studios after the four month period is over so that they can continue yeah. running the studio um so i can uh, you know we can send details um right yeah i think like you know like we have one more uh, session tomorrow <laughs> with the crazy so, yeah um, yeah 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 yes uh so through our advice going to that session because uh deepak is going to discuss the crazy hubs program in great detail. sure sure I, i'll do that so i think uh, yeah, we we'll we'll is it available to students uh, the program talking about the the program is open to students either who are in the last semester or just freshly graduated because okay. after after you're done with the four month period we want your team to be able to continue working with us as a studio so uh, having a kind of a situation where you go have to go back to school after is not ideal for yeah. us as an accelerator because we're not an internship program we're an accelerator so uh, we want people who are going to commit full time uh, to the program Thank you. after yeah. done you know makes sense yeah awesome. So, yeah. thank you so much uh, like i'll bring on the next one all right darshan so, darshan chaudhary uh darshan like uh, you can accept and like come to speak up uh, darshan yeah yeah you can go ahead darshan hello hello am i audible yes so hello fellow chamers hello surajit sir actually i am not so good at talking in a group so kindly pardon my mistakes uh are you listening to me guys yes yes we can hear oh, okay okay 
so my question will maybe go out of the topic but still i wanted to ask you that uh, i am more at concept art and story designing and uh, so i wanted to work in some big industries like uh, batista and uh, from software ubisoft so how my road map should be and uh, what thing should i do um so i think i think again in any kind of you know whichever kind of area you are in and if you think do you do you want to get into hyper casual is that what you said uh, no no i am more at a uh, concept art and story designing like a uh, big big games yeah projects. yeah so um, and and you i were you asking of how how do you get into hyper casual what was the question exactly i, I missed that part oh sorry so i wanted to ask that uh, how should i get into the get into the big industries like a uh, batista ubisoft i like big industries um so i have very little experience in the big industry side of things because i have worked mostly in mobile and uh, in flight entertainment and you know niche spaces like that but um my opinion on this is that you need to uh, you know in any kind of job firstly if you're going to climb the ladder at your job you need to um, you need to have the skills and the uh, kind of motivation to rise up in the ranks in your own company first um i think ideally if you're able to do that and get a few promotions along the way stick at one company for a few years learn everything there is to learn about your role um and also then you know be promoted from one project to a bigger project to a bigger project within the company these are things that are good signs of progress now if you're making progress within the company um and you're making it quickly over you know three four year period of time i think that's that's a good amount of time to stay at one company and then try your hand and move forward um because i think at, at least at the beginning of your career you need to learn as much as possible and then try and find the best kind of uh, fit that is if you're happy now darshan it's so it's so like personal and subjective to each person and each situation um that i feel that if i give you any advice uh it might not be right for your situation but so i'm trying to keep my advice generic in this uh, because i think at the end of the day if you are going to uh, climb the ladder in you know in a corporate kind of life then you have to uh, climb the ladder within your own organization and uh, as you do that you build credibility to be able to get a job at a bigger you know at a, at a bigger name publisher or a bigger name developer so you know today you might be um, is a concept artist or a student concept artist um and you know you have uh, placements that happen through the college or um at different times of the year uh, the first step would be to have a portfolio again uh, if you don't have a portfolio uh, especially in the gaming industry very few people are going to just look at a resume i think everybody wants to look at a bit of a portfolio especially for a concept artist you want to see what you've done or uh, you know what kind of skills you have how much detail you can do um, and how suited is it to the platforms that we create games for so if i was in the console gaming space i would try and see if darshan's concept art and his portfolio of concept art uh, kind of is caters to the to the console gaming space and you know what's trendy there what works there and um, you know are, are the are, is the art that you're creating in your portfolio is it relevant to the to the market today or is it a little outdated or you know is it so cool that i'm like i'm i'm, I'm mind blown you know uh, so th- those are things that i would i mean again generic advice but generic advice is there for a reason it's so uh, important and um having a portfolio is by far the best thing you can do for your career um a really good updated portfolio at all times art station is a great place to host your portfolio and keep it there so people can also find you um You know, I I I I hope that answers your question. But again, Darshan, I yes, apologize. Yes, I, 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 I can't I can't give you specific advice unless I know specific things. Uh, you know about your situation and what makes you happy and things like that. But yeah, that's the advice I would give. Yeah, um, yeah, sure. Thank you, thank you for your so, yeah. so, Sirajit, like we have one last question uh, on our uh, help thread cha- channel. Like it's uh, it is. Ooh, actually... I think I don't see any more raised hands. No, actually, so it's in this. I assume that would be the end of the questions. So there's a separate uh, guy like who actually like he don't have mic. It seems. Uh, if Mario, if you're guy. saying anything, you're on mute. By the way. Uh no. Like, so uh, yeah, actually, uh, 
like we have one question on the health thread uh, health thread channel that's from yeah. mangayam uh, okay. so like are dota and league of legends and even csgo uh, dying with the intro of valorant like if that is the case for the competitive games how to evolve and stay relevant with the hyper casual game when another hyper casual game arrives as a competition of our own games yeah the great question um, to answer your question i would tell you that hyper casual games are competition for each other for sure because in hyper casual games people don't stick around playing for months and months they play for a few days and then they drop the game you know that's the whole industry is built around these like quick experiences that people can play for a few days and then move on to the next game so hyper casual games in general they die very fast and uh, they are not like they are not like the dotas and league of legends of this world uh you know where they where people are playing them for years and years and years it's more about people play them for days or weeks and maximum a uh, couple of months at a time but um, we always have to innovate and uh, that's why the market is super aggressive because the market is looking for so many new games at all times that um they get bored of the ones that they're given you know and the ones that uh, that they end up playing so they're always looking for new things and new games so we need to supply them with as many games as possible and um, in this process of trying to supply the market with you know it's created opportunities to test a lot of games because if we need or uh, if the market is only going to be satisfied you know with 100 new games a year for example then we probably need to be testing 1000 uh, or 10000 uh, trailers to find those 100 amazing new games uh, every year across the industry so um, you know that that's that's kind of the nature of the market it's hyper competitive um it is it's called hyper casual but it's actually hyper competitive in the background uh, and you know that that's just what we have to do to keep studios alive to keep pub- publishers thriving we have to test as many trailers as possible and find the best possible uh, games at a rapid rapid speed and um, uh, i'd also like to say one more thing about since you mentioned dota league of legends cs go with the same kind of question um is that i think uh, while uh, these games are not suffering i mean these games are actually suffering by the loss of their players because they are heavily reliant on players sticking around for a long time that's how they make all of their money hyper casual games are not reliant on people staying for a long time uh we show ads uh, you know in in the in the few days that the players play they play so much that they see a lot of ads and in those ads is where we make our money and uh, that's kind of you know the nature the difference in the nature of hyper casual games But if people are leaving our games it doesn't mean necessarily that we are uh, losing or that it's ba- a bad thing it just means that they're playing a lot as well or uh, seeing a lot of ads monetizing for the company and um, also keeping the game healthy by engaging a lot in the few days that they play the game for so Uh, that's the kind of difference between hyper casual and the uh, traditional gaming industry cool cool i think like i hope like uh, you answered his question very well uh, so yeah i think like uh, no still right okay so he's very pleased with the answer cool okay so yeah uh, then we can end this session i guess like thank you very much surajit uh, thanks for like coming here i like like i would like you to wish our jammers a happy you know good game game jam this time yeah uh, you know the game jams ga- game jams are sacred like i said before they are a tradition in the industry that we must take seriously because ultimately when we are in the industry especially in Uh, fast paced rapid environments like hyper casual every day is like a game jam so take this opportunity to get a taste of uh, you know what it's like to be part of something sacred something special uh, give it your best shot good luck and good game to all of you thank you surajit thank you for uh, coming here like uh, we'll let you know like once we have this like we'll be live showcasing the uh, games that uh, that has been made in this game jam like i'll be sharing you the live link as well Uh, on sunday evening cool cool, cool. amazing amazing all right cool great great thanks for having me mario thanks a lot guys so so pleasure being here thank you thank you very much thank you